It's Matthew chapter 19 verse 30. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. And Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he set them into his vineyard. When he, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man had hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his stewards, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house saying, They last have wrought, have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go <coughs> thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thy eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first last. For many be called but few chosen. Here ends the Bible reading. Matthew chapter 20 verse 16. So the last shall be first and the first last. For many be called but few chosen. Lost shall be first and the first lost. We are reading from chapter 19 last verse through, chap uh, through chapter 20 verse 16. It's one continuous passage. The lost shall be first and the first lost. There's a beautiful illustration in the Bible. Two weeks back, we had our meditation from this passage. And I said that I would continue this passage today. So we'll have a very brief meditation on this passage in this morning. Uh, when the apostles had the news that Jesus is risen from the dead, John and Peter ran to the sepulchre first. They were running to the sepulchre. And among them, John was running first and Peter next. But when they reached the sepulchre, first became the lost and the lost became the first. Peter went into the sepulchre first. In the kingdom of God, we see first becoming lost and lost becoming first. I lost a couple of weeks back when I introduced this topic. As an introduction I was giving a very few salient points to understand this passage in depth. This was Jesus' lost journey 
to Jerusalem. So in chapter 19 down, we see Jesus path to Calvary. So Jesus was teaching this important kingdom, this important kingdom truth to his disciples on his last leg of ministry and his path to Calvary. Uh, my dear brother, my dear sister, and in this parable, we are able to see what is the purpose behind it. He wanted people to understand that though the promise was given to Israelites, to the Jews, if they are not fitting into God's purpose, they lose their calling and this blessing will go to the Gentiles. And we see he was explaining the parable. In this parable, the kingdom of heaven is like hiring laborers into his vineyard. And the way and method of the gospel dispensation. So in the way and the method of gospel dispensation, he is hiring people to serve in his vineyard. His vineyard is the church. His vineyard is the church. So this husbandman goes early in the morning to hire lab laborers for the vineyard. So the early morning speaks about dawn of gospel dispensation. Dawn of gospel dispensation. So he need many apostles. He need many Bible teachers. Who were they? Peter, a fisherman. One John, one James. He needed laborers for his vineyard, for the church. And these laborers are apostles or all Christians. So it is not that he hired only at the dawn, at the early hours. All through the day he was hiring laborers. So he has hired me and he has hired you. All Christians are laborers and he is hiring us to his vineyard. And one important thing, the twelfth hour of the day. Twelfth hour of the day is six o'clock in our time. There the it's a bit in uh, the labor will be over. The darkness will cover. They will uh, complete their work in the twelfth hour. It's the twelfth hour of the day. It talks about in the church. The church age will. I'm just going. To, I'm not getting into the details. Uh, I have preached to you earlier about this. The church age is coming to an end. Twelfth hour is the age of tribulation. The age of darkness. Where no man can work. The last few hours. The last hour. The twelfth hour, the end of day. Is the beginning of the days of tribulation. Before the return of Jesus Christ. And it is the end of church dispensation. So the other hours, 3 o'clock, it's about 9, 6 o'clock, that's about the 6th hour, that's about uh, 12 in the midday, and 9 o'clock, that's 3 in the evening. So the 11th hour, maybe just an hour before the end. That's an hour before the end. From where he collects all these laborers, he collects all these laborers from a marketplace. Market speaks about a place of transaction. 
buying and selling win win situation it's a place where commerce is most important commerce is the most important thing. so these laborers are found in the place of importance in the place of commerce it speaks about a mundane world where everything is depending on money from that world he selects these laborers but we see in the third hour the sixth hour ninth hour eleventh hour he stand he sees some people standing idle what are they doing standing idle my dear brother my dear sister probably if they were standing idle earlier the husband man would have invited them also would have uh, enrolled them also they were not there at the beginning but now they have come there in this contest standing idle they are not doing the lord's business they are not serving in the vineyard they can serve in the vineyard they are not serving in the vineyard so he invites them also the problem comes when he was giving the wages he was giving the wages to everybody in the same level to everybody in the same level everybody the same uh, amount to the first and to the last that made those who hired first murmur so jesus wanted to tell them this parable to make them understand how this kingdom business works this was the introduction and i shared this introduction last week very briefly now i have brought this uh, to your remembrance maybe two weeks back i am getting into the core part what is the real mystery of the kingdom of god is it right one who is logging from the beginning to the evening bearing the scorch of the sun he also gets uh, maybe say 600 rupees and one who came in only at the 11th hour worked for only one hour he is also getting that 600 rupees is it lawful maybe in a worldly sense we may have different ideas but in spiritually jesus says this is how the kingdom mystery works so i want to bring you out five important points from this a very difficult passage a very controversial passage which a human eye cannot understand a human eye cannot see number 1 this husband man for this vineyard needs more workers till the end it is not enough that he had workers in the morning or midday even in the 11th hour he needs laborers for his vineyard this is one important mystery Jesus is not completing his ministry with those apostles or the church fathers in all these 2000 years Jesus needs more laborers to his vineyard so every one of us has got a purpose to serve in his vineyard you cannot say okay Jesus had enough workers 
May the Lord unfold His sovereign plan in your life. May the Lord unfold His sovereign plan in your life. The Lord needs workers in His vineyard. You are needed. He cannot say it is sufficient. He has hired some in the morning, some in the afternoon, but that's not enough. Till the eleventh hour, he needs work. Number two, I don't know how many of us have noticed, in all the situations, to the apostles, or rather those who are hired at the dawn, the first hour, third hour, sixth hour, we don't say a bargain was taking place, but those who were hired in the first hour, he told them what he would give. He told the apostles, you are forsaken, you are net, your boat, your houses, your parents, and you started following me. And I will give you hundredfold on the earth and in heaven, and you'll have the power and the authority to reign on the thrones. He said that what he would give because they are following them. But those who are hired in the third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, he never told them anything what he would give. Come and serve. Come and serve. So I was just thinking about people in the worldly situation. So somebody is sitting there, a mason, or a painter, or a carpenter. A contractor goes and tells him, just come and work for one hour. Is it not natural for that carpenter or for that laborer to ask how much you would give? How much you would give? It's a very natural question, but in the story of Jesus, all these fellows never bargained. They never asked how much the Lord would give. So the first mystery I saw, Till the twelfth hour, this vineyard needs laborer. And the second one, those who are hired, those laborers, never bargained, never bargained with him to ask what you would give. He said, Whatsoever is right, that you will receive. They believed him. They believed he would not cheat. They believed they got a reward. They believed that this Lord would give them what is right for them. In 2 John 1 8, in 2 John 1 8, Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which have wrought, but that we receive full reward. Focus our attention that we would receive full reward. It is very, very important in the spiritual life. My dear brother, my dear sister. We'll go to verses 6 and 7 of chapter 20. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? What happened? They were standing here all the day, maybe from six o'clock. They are saying to him, because no man hath hired us. 
something somewhere is not match he went to hire people and these men were standing there it is not they were not there these men were standing there but they say no one has hired us what is missing is it true this landlord was not hiring them from the morning they were standing there so the landlord says go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right that you shall receive probably this landlord was not going to a b and c and say oh selvam selvam you come for the ministry ponraj ponraj you come for the labor uh, vinod vinod you come for the labor he was not calling like that he said come he said hear me come i'll give you work in my vineyard come 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 there is work in my vineyard follow me follow me and some people listen to that invitation and why are these people listening to that invitation probably this is what i think they were negligent to his call because they came to the marketplace they are laborers they want to serve but all through the day why they wasted maybe because they wanted an alternative job they wanted a better job maybe they are standing there idle there was a call to them also now they say nobody hired them but there was a landlord who was willing to hire them they don't want to heed to his calling they wasted the full day but he was very merciful towards the end he hired them their answer was not hired standing idle if you are not working in this vineyard whatever else you may do in god's language you are idle does it mean that he should come for the full time ministry no it's not that if you are not hired what are you doing what are you doing you are a child of god you are not doing god's business then what are you doing you are doing uh, your own business okay that's right but then why are you saved why have you become born again why have you become a god's child you have to do god's business when i was a teacher i was doing god's business i have seen many people those who are working as police doing god's business working in private sectors but doing god's business in their bank they are god's representative they are serving in god's vineyard they are doing god's business my dear brother my dear sister maybe because of my health i was and others were also equally worried about my extensive travel but yesterday when i was listening to the testimony one retired CRPF jawan he travel with those people in 20 days 10000 kilometers in 20 days 10000 kilometers 
It's not a question whether he is in CRPF or he is in business or he is a full-time pastor or a teacher. If you are not hired to serve in the Lord's vineyard, today understand a beautiful lesson. You are standing idle. You are standing idle. And finally I just say one more thing. Never God is unlawful. Never God will be unlawful. It is, I don't vouch what he would give to the apostles. The same he would give to everybody. Every star is different. Every star is different in its glory. Every star is different in its glory. Uh, my dear brother, my dear sister, nevertheless, we all receive reward proportion to our labor. However, one important lesson we have got in this, God is never unlawful. God is never unlawful. You will certainly receive what is right for you. To conclude, I tell you, you are a laborer in his vineyard. You are a laborer. In this new Carmel year, take a decision to serve the Lord. There was a beautiful mime, from, a mime by the girls. The end of the mime was a beautiful quotation. Every unsaved person is a mission field and every Christian is a missionary. Every unsaved person is a fertile mission field and every Christian is a missionary. He must have the vision that without Christ these people will go to hell. When I see the beggars, when I see the forlorns coiling themselves and lying down on the platforms, I pray, Lord, this soul must come to hell. Rich and poor. The labor is high. The laborer are few. Especially today, we are very much in the eleventh hour. We know what's happening in Iraq, how more than hundred thousand Christians were displaced how Christian children were brutally killed if that's happening in Iraq today can we say it will not happen in India tomorrow my dear brother my dear sister if you don't awake today at least if we are not willing to win a few persons, pull out a few persons out of the hellfire, God's condemnation will come upon us. Ask God, Lord, give me some grace. Something I should do. It's not your age. If I am not wrong, sit straight. Went to Africa mission after 80. He went to Africa mission after 80. My dear brother, my dear sister. There is a race you have to run. There is a commission you have to fulfill. You are commissioned into God's vineyard. Don't waste even a single day. Have the ill killer's instinct. If I live, I live for the Lord. If I die, I die for the Lord. 
somehow we are going to die what a glorious thing it would be when our death comes we are serving the lord maybe it is a too much a lust whether i deserve it or not i desire it i may not be worthy to desire this as i said whether i deserve this or not i desire this not somehow if a coming is delayed one day i will die what a glorious thing it would be when i die either must be either i must be standing on my knees talking to you or i must be standing on my heels talking about you whether i must be standing on my knees talking to you or standing on my heels talking about you death is set maybe the coming of the lord precedes a rapture is set till that time till that time you must be able to say i run my full race i fought a good fight fight a good fight against all your odds all your weaknesses all your negative points all your situations if you are not serving in the lord's vineyard you are standing idle If you are not serving in the Lord's vineyard you are standing idle there's nothing in between either you should be serving the Lord or you should be standing idle you got no other business all the saved people have got no other business you are saved to save others plunder hell and replenish the heaven the spirit of the Lord has spoken to you. you are a laborer a laborer needed for the lord's vineyard i'll just pray with you dear father god we thank you we praise you we worship you o lord the lord it's a mystery i don't think that my wits are able to explain this sublime truth to your people Lord humanly I cannot understand how the first would become the last and the last the first but we know one thing oh lord you know more laborers in your vineyard still you are calling us to serve you oh lord if any one of us is negligent your call earlier standing idle in this marketplace father god this morning speak to their hearts oh lord you need them oh master god lord one great satisfaction in our lives you will never be unlawful to your people bless your people in jesus matchless name we pray amen